Good morning, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T Touch practitioner for animals and people. This is Tristan, he's a corgi, and we're here for an episode of Conversations with a Corgi. We're gonna continue discussing Fast Cat today. Um, so we talked about what Fast Cat is, and we talked about training your dog and conditioning your dog to do Fast Cat. So, oh, the day of the show has arrived, and what do we do? Okay, you pack the car with water for your dog, water for you, a chair for you, a crate for your dog, a fan for your dog if you have it. Um, if not, just paper that you're gonna fan at him. <laughs> um, and you, you know, there's plenty of battery operated fans. Um, sometimes I use this one that's like on a squirt bottle that just goes around because my dog's little. Um, you're gonna wanna bring two leashes and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have um, and we didn't talk about this yesterday, you wanna make sure you have a watch with a second hand because you're gonna to wanna to be able to um, time your dog's heart rate. And yes, our iPhones do that, but it's much easier to look at a watch when you're doing this. So have a watch with a second hand. And uh, some treats for your dog that are soft because at the end of the run, he's gonna be panting and just trying to get air. And if you try to crunch up a, a crunchy treat at that point, it's not gonna go well. Cheese is good, something soft that if they end up swallowing without chewing, it won't strangle them. Um, and you might wanna wait till after your dog's had a bit of a walk before you give him treats at the end of the run. Um, of course, all kinds of meats are good at the end of a run. So uh, before you go, let's just talk a little bit about finding your dog's heart rate. We have done this on other episodes of Conversations with a Corgi a long time ago, but the femoral artery is, stand up there, sweetie under the hind leg, like in under the stifle here. I don't know if you can see, like under here. <laughs> and that's a good place to check the heart rate. So before you go, you wanna make sure you're good at finding your dog's heart rate. Of course, you can also find it behind their front leg. Um, make sure you're not using your thumb because then you'll be getting your heart rate, which is very easy to feel with your thumb. So you wanna use your other fingers to feel your dog's heart rate and then what we often recommend is timing it for 15 seconds while you're looking at your stopwatch and figuring out how many beats per minute it is by multiplying that by four. A little guy like Tristan, his heart rate's gonna be 120 beats per minute. Uh, bigger dogs, hearts beat slower. Littler dogs, hearts beat faster. So you wanna know what normal is for your dog before you go and you wanna also have checked your dog after some of these little jogs you're doing when you're conditioning him. So you arrive at the show, the first thing you wanna do when you get there, get your dog out, walk him around, get him familiar with the area, take him for you know, a good walk to do his business, whatever. Um, some dogs get very excited by seeing the string with the quote bunny plastic bag on it. So you might wanna do your walk away from that area just to keep your dog calm so that he can really use his best effort when he's running and not just getting excited watching the bunny before it's even his turn. I saw quite a few dogs at different events that, you know, there's a bunny malfunction or confusion over who goes next and a dog that's really just raring to go over a two to three minute period of waiting kind of loses his momentum and then he doesn't do his best run. So that's not fair to the dog. So you wanna try to keep him calm when you first get there. You're gonna sign in. Usually you've already signed up for a time block to do your runs in. Um, because corgis don't do well in heat, I tend to try to run my dog before 10 or 11 in the morning. But you know, if you have a chihuahua, two o'clock might be fine. Um, and also the age of your dog could have an impact on his ability to run well. But if you've done the conditioning program I talked about yesterday, even a guy as old as 12 like this boy and older, um, depending on the breed, can do quite well with fast cap. So when it's your turn, they're gonna be announcing dogs like, you know, Trevor, Floppy, Fluffy, um, you know, is next. When your dog's name is about five dogs, six dogs out, which is technically six minutes, but it might be as much as 10 or 15. So depending on how your meat is going, you wanna get your dog out and walk him around quite a bit for like a good 10 to 15 minutes before it's his turn with some little short jogs in that as well, um, as much as you can do with your dog. I mean, it's easy with a corgi, but if I had like a big sight hound, I don't know that I'm enough of a runner to warm that dog up really properly. Um, but it does take several minutes, like up to 15 minutes for the synovial fluid in the joints to go from the Vaseline state that it is in at rest to a more juicy state 
less viscous, um, and you want your dog to be in that juicy state when he's running, you wanna lubricate these joints as much as possible because they're really pushing off with the hind end and pulling with the front end to go. So a good 15 minute walk, jog, walk, jog, walk, jog before his turn is a good way to warm him up. And again, if your dog is going berserk over the bunny, do this in an area where he's not so uh, watching the other dogs and the bunny. So when it's his turn to go in the box, you're gonna hand him over, <laughs> and it's not really a box, it's just like a 10 foot wide chute that goes the length of the 100 yards and a little more. So you're gonna hand him over to your release person. Um, we have had like a really nervous dog, so in that case, uh, the owner might be the release person, but generally the release person is a complete stranger. And as I mentioned, your release person can have a really big impact on your dog's run. It's not great to have it be one of your kids or your husband who your dog knows. It's much better to have a stranger release your dog because your dog wants to get away from that person, plus find the bunny. And um, it's been pretty clear to me over times of doing this that the more the person talking to your dog is not good. It's distracting the dog. You might have the person just once say, go get the bunny or go get your mom or whatever when they release the dog but you don't want the person to become friends with your dog because then your dog wants to hang with them and not go, especially if you have a friendly dog. So the release person, they have people doing it at the shows usually, but you can just, you know, whoever's parked next to you, hey, can you release my dog? I'll hold yours, you know, whatever. So to hand your dog over to the release person, you take your second leash, you run down to the end, and during this time, uh, sometimes they let you run down the track. Usually there's a nice place next to the track for you to run. I call my dog the whole way down there like, Bisky, Bisky, where are you? Find mommy. <laughs> because he doesn't have a high prey drive. Some dogs do, but you know, he will start chasing the bag when he sees it. But in the meantime, he has no motivation to leave the start box if I'm not calling him. So I call him all the way down to the end. If your dog's new at this, no matter what their prey drive is, this is a good way to do it. And then I get down to the end and I've discovered over time that you can't just stand there and call them. They don't always see so well. Maybe if you have a sight hound and he's tall, but jumping up and down, waving your arms, going hysterical, calling your dog, yelling, get the bunny, whatever it is that's gonna make your dog run, that is all good. And the more you move so your dog can really see you, the better it is. So um, doing a whole dance down, and you wanna do this past where the end of the bunny is so that your dog will not slow down as he's coming up to the end. You want him to keep flying by to get you. Right, Biscuit? <laughs> so you run down and you start calling. The release person releases the dog when the um, facilitator says tally-ho. And this is a lovely tradition that I think is really uh, makes the sport even more fun. So he yells tally-ho or she. Um, they release the dog, runs down to the end, Usually it's gonna be 15 seconds for a little guy like this, 12 seconds. I've seen corgis do eight seconds. They are some of the top corgis in the country. I've seen other dogs lollygag on down there, 18, 19, 20 seconds. You don't want them to potty on the course. Um, you wanna make sure all that's done before they go. And if you have a female dog, they like you to do a little wipe up before they run so it won't distract the Mr. Dog coming down. Dogs that are run to the end, you catch them, put your second leash on them. I like to give them one treat and then start walking back. Now you have to go at least 100 yards to go back to where your crate is and sometimes further, but it's really important that you keep walking the dog. This is like a swimmer who just swam a really fast race or a racehorse that just ran the Kentucky Derby. You don't just stick him in a stall and say, good luck, buddy. <laughs> you wanna walk him around and help keep, especially in Fast Cat, you have two runs and if there's a bunny malfunction, you might have three runs. So you really wanna keep your dog with the um, circulation up in his body, clearing the lactic acid out of those muscles because this is a short burst of speed and lactic acid builds up quicker in those um, quick twitch muscles. So you wanna walk him, walk him, walk him, and offer him water. Lots of dogs like to have a drink. You wanna do that in sips, not in like downing the whole bowl at once. My dog really doesn't drink very much. He just like sticks his tongue in. Um, and walk him and walk him and give him more treats and then um, if he's calm and his heart rate has gone back to somewhere close to normal, which you have checked on his hind leg, you can put him in his crate for a rest in the shade. Um, I sometimes recommend, because you don't know where you're going for these things, and there might not be trees, especially in some of the western states, bring an umbrella or something so that he is in shade when he's in his crate. And use the fan if he needs it. And give him a good rest. 
And usually, um, if you're doing two runs within an hour, they'll usually give you a good 45 minutes between your two runs. Um, sometimes people schedule a run nine to 10 and 10 to 11, so they've got more time between the runs. Um, this is a good time to talk to your dog and hang out with him, watch some of the other runs, you know, keep him calm. Again, you want his energy all for that run. And when it's his second run, do the same thing. Get him out about 15 minutes early, walk him around, do some short jogs. Maybe you have a new release person. <laughs> Hand off your dog to that person. You run down to the end. They like you to go kind of smartly, <laughs> so I generally run, but there really are people that can't go that fast, but they'll wait for you. So you get down to the end, call your dog. He runs, you get your second time. Feed the dog a treat, walk him around some more, offer him water, walk him around some more, get his heart rate down, check his hind leg for his femoral artery. Um, and when he's calm and not panting and not excessively exhausted, have him go back in his crate. Maybe put the fan on him if he's hot, make sure he's got water. Don't leave him without water because sometimes they don't, they're smart enough to not drink a lot right away. And then you have the fun time of converting your score. So you're going to take your seconds and convert it to miles per hour. There's plenty of apps and uh, information online about how to do that. Um, and then your dog gets that number, miles per hour, um, with a handicap, depending on their size. My guy's little, he's, his number gets multiplied by two. 12 inch dogs, 1.5, and bigger dogs just get one. <laughs> Which, you know, one times anything is still that thing. <laughs> so they don't really have a handicap. And that gives you your points for the run. When you get up to 150 points, you're gonna be like Tristan, you're gonna be a B cat. Um, and they haven't ever said that B cat is like beginner cat, but it sort of seems that way. And then the next level up is D cat. And then after that, you're an F cat. But you go from 150 points to 500 points to 1,000 points to be a, um, an F cat. And you can get multiple F cats. Down in the area where we were in Virginia in the Potomac Corgi Club, they have a great coursing group and they meet all the time and they sponsor events frequently. So it's not too hard um, considering that you can get about 150 points with six good runs. Um, it's not too hard to get up there, but you gotta go every weekend and these things really fill up. Like I just checked my area, there isn't another one coming up in the indefinite future. <laughs> and these are run outside, so in New England, the ground freezes, not a great idea to run your dog on frozen ground. So, it, and the bunny doesn't work well, it's all a whole thing in the winter. So it's a great sport. So those are some of the things you should know um, when you're at the show to keep your dog happy and comfortable. And it really is so much fun to do fast cat with your dog, right, Biscuit? Um, and it's a, a fun and thing to do with your children. Um, I saw quite a few junior handlers there. Uh, and there, you can look on the AKC website. They do keep posted um, the scores per breed. Um, and I think Tristan's going to end up being in the top 25 of his breed. And he is not that fast. He's He's just barely cutting it, but they do list it all the way down to 100. <laughs> so that's kind of fun for your child or you to go and look on their website and see your dog's status. Um, so it's all a really fun sport and it's not without some work that you have to put in ahead of time, conditioning your dog and really making sure he's well warmed up before he does his run. Um, and if you've looked at any of my T-Touch videos after the run, I do ear slides like this. Fingers or thumb in the ear to support it. Don't let it snap at the end. And then lick of the cow's tongue, which is just this. This really helps bring the heart rate down after a run. Plus they like it. And I tend to spend some time massaging my dog, um, his shoulders in particular, because they get sore after a run. I do lots of tea touches around his shoulders and just plain old outright massage, which he likes. So you can do that between your runs too, uh, but that's another whole episode of conversations with a corgi. But you can look up ear slides and lick of the cow's tongue um, on my other videos under YouTube, under conversations with a corgi. So thanks for joining us today. I don't know when we'll be back. I know I'm at my educator job every single day next week, so probably I won't be here next week, maybe Friday, I'm not sure. So everybody have fun with your dog, have a great day. And we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us.